Here's a short video on uh, selector switches. Uh, the selector switch has two positions. It's a maintained switch, so it stays where you leave it. Uh, on the back, on this one I have a contact block, which is normally open. So you can see the, the pin that moves when I switch it on and off. Um, if I wanted to add another contact block to this, all I do is line it up with the holes on the back and tighten this down with a screwdriver. Then I could have one open, one closed. Uh, I don't really want that for what I'm doing right now. Uh, on this selector switch, what I've done is I've attached a, uh, a fuse holder and an alligator clip. So the plan with this is to uh, bring power in through the alligator clip, through the fuse, through the switch, and the switch will be an on-off switch. So let's let's look at the uh, the switch itself for just a minute. Let me zoom into that. If you look on the side, uh, I like to come in on the low number, go out on the high number, just to have a sort of a, a structure to it. So come in on three, go out on four. Notice the ratings on this switch. This is a 10 amp, 24 volt uh, switch, two and a half amps at 400 volts. I don't know that I would want to switch 400 volts through this, but I guess I could. Um, you know, your control voltages are normally about 24 volts. Uh, 120 is also very common, um, but it is, uh, you know, rated for 10 amps at 24. Notice also while we're while we're looking at this, notice the UL symbol right here. So this contact block is actually a a listed contact block and it's got numerous safety ratings on it so it's a it's a good quality component um, made in Italy so that's that's fine too so you'll notice that uh, it's got two positions if I was going to install this on a panel I would take this off put this through the hole on the panel and then put the back onto it and twist it in place. Then I would tighten the screws to hold it against the panel. So there's a selector switch.